Well, let's take a closer look at the possible repercussions of such attacks with Remy Piet joining me now from Miami. Remy is a research associate on political economy and foreign policy at Florida International University. Welcome back to the show. It's a pleasure, Rachel. So give us an idea. What were some of the arguments made during today's USTR hearing? Well, there's a lot of hypocrisy around all this. I mean, if you actually look at it, you know, from, from distance and, and analyze the situation, uh, you have having right now a, a rise of a lot of, uh, of trade and, 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 and uh, distribution from those large companies, the GAFAs, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, that are actually a fairly, uh, an unfair competition to the retail business in every single country. So right here, and, and the situation is, is actually backed by most of the prominent economists, you know, Thomas Piketty, uh, you know, jo Joseph Stiglitz with the Nobel, economic Nobel Prize winner, saying that there should be a certain element of, of taxation on those companies that make billions of dollars of profits and unfortunately do not abide by the same rules that other more smaller retail shops that are closing you know, day after day. Uh, and on this uh, situation, actually, there was a consensus on the international level from all countries, including the U.S., now, a certain level of taxation should actually be implemented. Uh, the U.S., the Trump administration, together with other countries at the G20, gave a mandate to the OCDE to actually put together a proposition for a tax that was supposed to be presenting at the end of this month. Right. And France actually implemented a pilot project ahead of time. And this is this pilot project that the Trump administration is condemning right now, moving back on its earlier promises and its you know, joint uh, position with other countries to try to find a fair situation in terms of taxation of those mega companies. So then, Remy, what was the tipping point that led up to this digital tax being proposed in the first place? Well, it's, it's a consensus among economists saying that something should happen. We're seeing a, 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 a rise of, of uh, you know, local businesses and retail stores going bankrupt because of this competition from Amazon Prime, from other uh, different companies distributing goods. And therefore, the, there was a, a, a gathering from you know, economists and, and, and politicians of trying to see how to you know, level the playing field and provide uh, the capacity for local uh, business owners also to thrive and be able to compete against Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple. And, and this consensus, unfortunately, was actually thrown away by the Trump administration over the last couple of, of, of months. The main reason is very simple. It's simply because we are now entering uh, uh, an election year uh, where the capacity to you know, campaign in the U.S. On, on Google, on Facebook, and so on is going to be very active. You have intense lobbying right now uh, uh, in Washington, D.C., trying to repel any kind of taxes and trying to you know, foster the support to those you know, large companies. And this is clearly a, an interest from more you know, domestic games from politicians such as the Trump administration and other you know, prominent Democratic leaders at Congress to try to potentially repel this you know, consensus at the international level. Now, One now, has to keep in... Yes, Remy, please. to that point, the, now the Trump administration is saying that France's plan unfairly affects U.S. tech. And part of the reason, according to the administration, is that it's being implemented because France is jealous of American tech innovation. What are your thoughts on this and the idea that other countries now, though, may join in? Well, there's actually a strong, a strong rhetorical elements to this, and, and, and you have to take this with a little grain of salt to understand what, what Trump is trying to achieve here and more, you know, gather support domestically on, uh, towards his, his potential re-election bid. And if you look at the, trend, the, the, the framework of the taxation from France, it's something that came out of the G20. There was actually a little, you know, conflict in Biarritz in October between the U.S. and France about, um, uh, about the implementation, the early implementation in France of, of that taxation that was actually solved between Trump and Macron, saying that, you know, France would actually reimburse part of this taxation if, in case, this taxation was above what is recommended by the OCDE. But we're seeing right now the simple implementation of, of a global consensus over the need of, tax, of, of, ta of uh, implementing a taxation on large companies that, you know, don't abide by the basic fiscal rules that has been thrown away by the window by a Trump administration and potentially political interest at the Congress uh, to make sure that this doesn't happen and, and gather, you know, support domestically after huge uh, lobbying in Washington, D.C. The truth is, is that there needs to be some level of taxation internationally. The OCDE is definitely the right level to be able to implement this because it is a gathering of the largest economies in the world. Right. And therefore, that doesn't benefit one country against another. It is true that the American companies are fairly more advanced on this level, but they actually are competing against also small retail uh, companies in the U.S. and a series of, of people that are the very same one that Trump has, has promised to try to protect and, and, and prevent from losing their jobs. They are the one going bankrupt today when, because of the lack of taxation on the GAFAs. All right. Thank you so much. Remy Piet there, research associate on political economy and foreign policy at Florida International University.